Good afternoon. Am I audible? Thank you. Dear shareholders, board members, management team, and esteemed guests, it's with great pleasure and anticipation that I extend a warm welcome to all of you for the annual general meeting of Technotree 2024 in its hybrid format. As we gather here in person and many virtually, we have come together as a community of stakeholders by shared, with our, shared in our commitment to Technotree's vision and values. And I would like to thank all the shareholders for this record participation this year in this new forum and format. In fact, this is probably the very first time the company has taken formal uh, accommodation to host uh, in such a venue. And I'm proud to see the attendance and the audience here. We will make great efforts going forward to ensure that many of our share owners can participate both in presence and virtually going forward. The past year has been a testament of our resilience as a company with adaptability and unwavering commitment and dedication to driving innovation in the telecom industry. Despite the unprecedented challenges we have faced as a company with the global landscape, Technotree has remained steadfast in its pursuit for excellence in innovation and agility and customer-centric approach to navigate through very turbulent times and to ensure that our course is set due north for growth. Today's AGM serves as a pivotal reflection of our celebration, and I look forward to the upcoming deliberations on the various matters. May our deliberations be fruitful our decisions be informed, and our collective efforts be guided by the shared vision of excellence and progress. There are three important governance pillars for any company that is listed. The first one, I would say, is financial stability, brand equity, and customer growth. Technotree for the last five, six years has absolutely focused on this pillar. We have had record growth in terms of customer base in the last five years. We've been recognized as a mid-cap company by Nordic Diversity Business Index and a game changer by the Helsinki Stock Exchange for the turnaround story. It is, Technotree has also constantly been recognized by industry stalwarts and analysts like TM Forum and Gartner for delivering cutting-edge technology, outstanding performance, in terms of delivery of solutions to our customers and becoming trusted advisors of our customer base globally. Obviously, we couldn't have achieved all of that without share owner participation. The second pillar is employee engagement and career development. And here, Technotree has made a lot of investments to ensure that many of our employees are certified telecom experts in their domain and have continued to grow within the company in a learning environment. The third pillar is share owner confidence and returns. And here I want to take a personal moment to say that it is extremely important that we continue to invest in our share owners and continue to garner um, their support. And I want to thank, your, thank you all for being here today and supporting Technotree. However, I am personally very keenly sensitive to the type of conversations and questions related to management compensation that have been a cause of some concern. And I thought before I start to deliberate the performance of the company and the future growth direction of the company, I take a few moments to quell your concerns as I am personally heavily invested in the company. As you already know, I'm an important share owner of the company and I have worked very, very hard the last 13 years to help turn this company around. So I wanted to start this presentation with giving you a long-term commitment in terms of value creation plan for Technotree, and then try to evaluate the overall performance of the company. Towards that, what I want to share is subject to the approval of the share owners, I, I think it's very hard for me to read from here, but I'll try, of the reverse split and the dividend distribution policy of the management, the company will take the following actions with regards to management compensation. The company will first align itself to a stable dividend policy. 
the company will company will link it as an important uh, as attribute of top management compensation in terms of free cash flow resulting in a, uh, resulting after a stable dividend uh, payout and the targets would be set as follows the management will uh, must close the calendar year of 2024 with positive free cash flow post the expenses and post including the dividend distribution the management must be able to uh, achieve the stated dividend distribution for for of 0.2 cents euro per share for distribution in the year 2025 to make it amply clear the company is not committing that the stable dividend distribution will be increased to 0.02 cents but wants to give shareholders clarity of how management compensation will be tied to the dividend distribution policy the existing fixed compensation and bonuses for the company management will be met will meet the following objectives there will be no increase in management compensation for the year 2024 only other than cost of living adjustments as required in the various geographies the ceo and cfo 10% of the fixed pay and 20% of their bonuses will be pegged against the target mentioned in the above item number 1 which is the positive free cash flow post expenses and dividend distribution the other management members of the core management committee will also be sub and the regional sales heads across the company will also be subject to a 20% of their bonuses being pegged against the targeted commitment so this i think clearly ties investor confidence return on shareholder investment back to the compensation of management which was an area of concern that i believe many of you had expressed in the forum and in other formats directly speaking Uh, to the board members and myself i hope this allays a lot of the concerns uh, that you might have had thank you for sharing your concerns and i hope this adequately addresses that going forward so i would like to now move to the formal presentation format of sharing our performance for this year i believe technotry has a winning plan and we, there's a lot of proof points in 2023 for us to be able to demonstrate it today technotry is a challenger in the market and we represent only 1% of the market at the growth that we have been able to establish over the last few years however our plan for 2024 and 25 continue to grow our market share in both emerging and emerged markets as we enter new frontiers of capability and customers in north america and canada and in the european mar markets and we believe we are becoming the trusted advisor to many of our tier 1 telcos by delivering on track record and proving to have extreme agility in the in the capabilities in which we deliver our products and services to our to our customers close to where they operate in the markets that they operate by doing so i think we are creating a formidable barrier uh, against our competitive forces as we move closer to newer growth markets our dynamics of our organization is definitely changing in terms of emerging technologies such that we are not only investing in ai skills to build our product stack but we are also investing in ai skills in our employees so that they can become far more productive produce high quality products and also improve their overall time to market and intelligent capabilities and result in um, uh, in employee engagement overall in addition to that every year we have been recognized for our diversity last year we were recognized by the nordics business uh, diversity index as a top mid cap company but in the realm of esg i really believe that we are going beyond a simple diversity metrics we are among probably the leaders in the in our market segment in terms of creating 
carbon neutral data centers and offices. And I believe in, by 2026, we will have more offices that would be ESG compliant going forward. In our business long term, customer value is intrinsically linked to employee value. And in 2018, with your support, we introduced an LTI policy for our employees. It has really helped us engage our employees and create value in terms of equity for our employees. And I think it, has, it will continue to grow as the company uh, continues to rapidly progress into newer markets. Um, in addition uh, to that, with regards to customers, we have successfully increased our footprint. I will talk more about the growth that we have had in global market in terms of our digital stack. And with the acquisition of cognitive scale, I think the demand for our products and technologies has further increased. While the last year we focused alone on AI capabilities and use cases, today we have embedded many of the product stacks with AI and our customers are, are finding the value that that stack brings in terms of true business outcomes that they are able to realize. And in terms of what all of this means to the shareholders, definitely investors will realize the benefit of free cash flow and the ability for the company to offer stable dividend with higher growth and returns will definitely stimulate greater investor confidence, we believe, in the next three-year time frame. And I believe the recipe for success is multidimensional, and we have certainly addressed the market analysts, the employees, the customers, and the investors in terms of our strategic plan to move forward. If you look then, after looking at the, the plan for the next three years at the 2023 results, they speak well in terms of our performance against the plan. Last year has been a record year in terms of revenue, order intake, and EBIT growth. It's something that the company has never seen below. We, before, sorry. We actually broke the barrier in terms of a 100 million euro mark for revenue growth and in constant currency terms, that is, and also in terms of cash flow, which is quite unheard of in the industry. And I will share with you industry comparator data uh, for similar types of companies globally. However, I know that the challenge for Technotree today is not the growth, but the work that we do in emerging markets. While emerging markets have challenged our ability in terms of ca cash collection, and foreign exchange conversion. Um, however, it has been, I must say, the bedrock of innovation for our product stack. The work that we have done in Africa and LATAM in terms of the number of products that we have introduced into these markets that are uh, helping the bottom of the pyramid globally, and the type of technologies and services which are cloud native, which are op open source based, which means the total cost of operations are quite low for the customer, have definitely become very, very attractive options when we enter the North American and European market today, because the subscription based economy requires more post prepaid type of services to be made available to their current postpaid customers. And they find the value proposition of our standards based integration capability extremely attractive in these growth markets. So on one hand, emerging markets have challenged us, but on the other hand, they have certainly helped us innovate and grow faster. While the industry trends speak for themselves, and the BSS market overall has been growing at a revenue of about 2.1%. Technotree's growth the last five years has been on an average 13% against the 2.1% of industry growth. And in 2023 alone, we had a growth of 9.5%, which is certainly above market. And that speaks to the product stack, that speaks to our strategy and how we have accelerated the penetration into emerging markets and used that as a focal point to enter newer emerged markets. The proof of the pudding in terms of what we have been able to 
accomplishes growth is the 12 new logos that we were able to add in 2023 alone compared to our comparator basket which had you know many of our competitors declared no more than five new logos in 2023. This has helped us ensure that 51 percent of all our revenues don't come from our legacy customers but from our new customers that have recently been acquired by Technotree. In addition to that, because of the maturity of the stack and the product readiness and availability, we were also able to win and retire deals in complex digital transformation format within the same year, which means we acquired a new customer and we were able to deliver the product stack within the same year. When you look at our global footprint, you can observe that we are steadily growing in North America and Europe. As a Finnish company to expand into these new horizons, especially the U.S. market, we need to build a follow-the-sun model in terms of having our services, products, and operational excellence available in these newer markets readily close to the customer. I'm proud to say that in 2023, we expanded our global support capability to 32 countries across the globe. So today we have a center in Argentina and Cordoba that supports a customer in South Sudan and supports another customer in Asia Pac. So we certainly have follow the sun model and ability to have a global capability to support many of our customers. This further requires the company to conduct near-shoring capabilities as well, closer to the markets that we serve. We notice that our customers want our services and our operations to be near to them, and so we continue to invest in a hub-and-spoke model where we are near-shoring some of our capabilities. And as you will see later, that this is definitely a financial strength for us because when we receive currencies in the local market, it provides a natural hedge in terms of our capability to deliver these services. In terms of a delivery footprint, I'm proud to say that we continuously expand the product capability. Today, we have 250 standardized journeys out of the box, 40 lines of business, and these are complex lines of business in the telecom industry are supported by our digital stack, and more than 1,000 new features were added to the product stack this year alone. So it has shown that with all of this, I spoke about, uh, about the ARR, annual recurring revenue model of service that we want to move towards. All of this investment in the product R&D has resulted in the growth of the annual recurring revenue from 35% to 43% this year alone in 2023. This revenue then stabilizes the, the collection capability of the company, also reduces our uh, standard DSO days, as you will see when Indresh covers his presentation. In order to increase our market share, when we go into newer markets, we really have to have different types of offerings and different types of points of entry into the market. Even within the telecom industry, we have 40 lines of businesses, customers starting at different proof points. There are also sub-brands that are continuously coming up as operations where the network spectrum licenses are subcontracted to uh, specific um, market owners within a region. Today we have a footprint that truly caters to this kind of market expansion. We have different types of product offerings where we have bundled a suite of products to serve a particular market. What this does is it increases the types of revenue monetization we can make. Traditionally, Technotry only had licenses and services revenue once we delivered after a couple of years, and then we collected managed services revenue. Today, our models have a DevOps-based revenue, which is a continuous stream of revenue in terms of annual recurring revenue or monthly recurring revenue. We have transactional business models where we actually get paid on revenue based on customer success, but also based on uh, a continuous subscription growth in, due to the digital stack that we offer. And finally, in our cloud offerings, we also offer the capability for a revenue share 
when, especially when we go to a B2B2C model where we are integrating a, partners, a set of partners in an ecosystem offering to our customers. So these multiple revenue models definitely help us penetrate deeper into the market and offer a wider variety of services by cross-selling and upselling current capabilities to existing customers and also reaching out to newer prospects in these markets. I know many of you have wondered what happened with the acquisition of Cognitive Scale and how well have we integrated this capability into our digital stack. Cognitive Scale was really a, a, a very good acquisition for Technotree with its 137 patents. It was truly a moment of serendipity because with that capability, we have now been able to embark on a very competitive and compelling strategy on AI by embedding the sense of fabric, the, the engineering capability of AIML into our digital stack to offer new types of services and goal-based outcomes that our customers can then use to gr monetize greater amount of revenue on our digital stack, as well as continue to effectively reduce cost of their operations while incre increasing their time to market. So we have launched several new, new use cases, both in Latin America and in Africa, using our AIML fabric, and customers definitely are enjoying the benefit of it. In addition to that, we are applying the same AIML strategy and capabilities into our own product stack with our engineering uh, R&D centers, where we are increasing our productivity of our technologists within our own labs to use AI to help improve the quality of our product in terms of testing the product, to help improve productivity of the, of the individuals themselves and help them co-pilot the ability to deliver better product at a faster time. So we are definitely using AI ML internally we are also using AIML externally. If you look at the, the little icon that says Technotree Roots, it's a chatbot that is used internally. It's very similar to ChatGPT, where a Technotree employee can query into Roots to get all kinds of information and has a s multiple source of data integrated, data models integrated into it. And through that process, it makes their work far more easier and far more accurate. The co-piloting capability we have brought with a generative AI called Technotree Shoots, Root and Shoots from a Tree, is an offering that we give to our customers, which helps our customers embed intelligence in the way that they interact with their customers to improve their ability to uh, have much more goal-optimized outcomes for their customers, to understand their needs of the customers, and to ensure that the information that they are using is accurate and is trusted. We have applied some of these technologies in Latin America with one of our uh, you know, important tier one telcos, and the outcomes of that has been spectacular. Today, we are now sharing that information with standards bodies like TM Forum and helping define and partner with them to define the new standards for AI for the telecom industry. So certainly the cognitive scale um, acquisition has given us uh, its competitive advantage for sure. We are number one in the telecom industry in terms of TM Forum compliance to API standards. Why is this important? Because of these standards, telecom industry by itself is fairly complex in terms of how the products and services are built and how order to cash capabilities are provided to their customers. There is a lot of checks and balances, legislative and governmental requirements that have to go in when you procure a SIM card or you give access in, in terms of internet connectivity to any user. Mm -hmm. Having a capability such as a standardized platform through which such services can be rendered means that our ability to integrate our platform into a complex telecommunication environment is, is much superior. 
And we are noticing the benefit of this, especially when we enter the North American market, that the TM Forum compliance and being number one in terms of API standardization in the world with 59 live APIs and seven to eight customers who are currently using these APIs in their environment definitely creates a moat in terms of competitors and, our ent and provides a barrier to entry for, for us uh, from our competition. In addition to TM Forum standards, Gartner has also recognized Technotree year on year since 2017 for our excellence in customer experience and revenue monetization and continuously recommends new customers about Technotree platform and its capability. In addition to that, many of the solutions that we have rendered have also been recognized as, and we have received excellence of awards or nomination for excellence, both in the area of customer experience, cloud nativity, as well as revenue assurance um, solutions for our customers. And this year, we've also been selected for network monetization uh, by TM Forum. I hope uh, the results come out in June. Finally, Technotree has been recognized by Gartner as a challenger. What does this really mean? It's a really an important, impactful statement to say that we are a leading challenger uh, in terms of prov providing order to cash capability for the telecom industry. What it really means is that our addressable market, which not long ago, as, as, as recent as three years ago, used to be about 50 million euros. Today has changed to 500 million euros as an addressable market. This is definitely strengthened by the fact that we are one of the fastest growing uh, companies with record revenue of 12% average growth and 9% in 2023 alone. And the number of acquisitions, new customer acquisitions that we just talked about, 12 new customers were acquired in one year last year. And also when you look at our competitors, we have definitely outperformed the industry in terms of revenue growth. And hence, I think the status of being a challenger in the market and that recognition is noteworthy. Finally, i just like to conclude by saying that overall, um, I hope my presentation has given you the confidence that we are in a growth trajectory as a company. Our financial performance has been steadily improving in the right direction, especially with the revenue diversification that we have been able to build over the last three, four years with the number of new customers that we have acquired and more than 50% of our revenue coming from a diverse set of customers, not dependent on one project or one customer to bring the revenue. Additionally, we have had a healthy organic growth. We entered the Middle East market in 2017. Today, we are a leader in that market. We have many tier one telcos that use Technotree technology in the Middle East market. And this is an important market because this market does have operators with wealth creation capabilities and are acquiring rapidly new telecom operations and spectrum licenses, both in Asia Pac and in Europe. And we continue to expand our footprint in North America aggressively into emerged markets. Finally, the portfolio of product that I've talked about, the standards compliance that we have adhered to, have all bared good fruit in terms of R&D investments that we have made over the course of the year. And I'm hoping that this winning strategy that I have been able to explain to you today, we are currently executing and will continue to grow our business and our commitment amongst our customers in 2024 and beyond. I'd like to now invite um, Indresh to take over and present the financial results. Thank you. Thank you, Padma. Good afternoon, everyone and uh, a hearty welcome to all our shareholders, board members, and uh, other stakeholders and guests. Today I will try to present the 2023 financial performance of the company and its highlights. I think it's a little bit difficult to 
look at that and speak, but I'll try to do my best. Okay. Yeah. Sure. First, I would like to highlight some of the uh, things what we achieved last year before going into the hard numbers. As you can uh, see, we had a consistent growth in revenue. We recorded the highest revenue in its history at 107 million in a constant currency. Constant currency, here we evaluate if there was no depreciation in the currencies in which we operate. If the currencies had stood at the same exchange rate at the end of the previous year, we would have crossed 100 million revenue last year. We have improved EBIT on account of higher revenue, high impact of foreign exchange losses on our net income, cash collections did improve, SCIF, that's the cash inflow at a constant currency, again comparing if there was no change in our currency exchange, we would have collected 84 million last year. Significant increase in new orders received leading to a record higher order backlog. Now I'll come to the actual numbers. Net sales, as you could see, we achieved 78.4 million, again 71 in the previous year, a growth of 9%. EBIT, that's the earnings before interest and taxes, we are able to record 23.8 million against 18 million, a very good 30% increase. Next on the negative side, we had a financial expenses of 9.9 .9 million against 1 million. Probably I would like to spend a couple of minutes explaining this particular phenomena, which is a highly negative one. The financial expense loss of 9.1 million includes forex losses due to turbulent exchanges in Nigeria that were devalued by more than 100% in a particular year. And also the hyperinflation, what we have been seeing in Argentina, where the economy suffered 200% inflation. The revenues from these two regions represent about 20% of our revenue, and that impacted my exchange losses very heavily. <coughs> Again, coming to the net income, because even though I had a very higher income, my EBIT was higher, but I had a heavy exchange losses that brought down my net income to the same level or slightly even lower than the previous year at 11.2 million. Cash collection, I already explained, we did about 62 million on real terms, which was about 6% higher compared to the previous year. We had a record order intake of 95 million euros. And we had a high revenue, a high order intake, which resulted in a record 80 million of order backlog. Order backlog basically means the orders which are in our pocket, which needs to be converted into revenue in the coming period. Again, we had a similar earning per share of 0 0.04. I'm sorry if the charts are a little bit cluttered, but I wanted to give a longer perspective to our shareholders. I'm comparing two charts here, revenue and collection. I have the data from Q1 of 2021, which is a reasonable period for us to evaluate. In Q1 of 21, my revenue was 11 million. This is for a particular quarter. It was 11 million per quarter in Q1 of 21. Just jumping to Q4 of 23, it was nearly a double of that. So that means from Q1 of 21 to Q4 of 23, we, our revenues got double. The company recorded the highest revenue I explained on a constant currency, on a constant currency, my revenue would have been higher by 47%. Then again, going back to the collections, there also I have given the quarter by quarter um, comparison of the same period. In Q1 of 21, we were at 11 million, and in Q4 of 23, I think we reached about uh, 20 million. Again, this is on the actual currency, not on a constant currency. So again, even without an exchange valuation for that, my, revenue, my cash collection also went up by nearly 75% in the three years term. Then what are we initiatives for improving the cash collection? As Padma already mentioned, the motto for our company this year has been think cash and do cash, which means that continuous tracking focused on improving the 
free cash flows is what we are looking at. Increased focus on ARR business. We already explained how 48% of my business we are getting into in the ARR model. Increased productization, driving faster deliveries. So we are also looking at um, how do we manage the productization of our product to ensure that we get the money also faster. Earlier, as Padma mentioned, we had a model of license, del license and then delivery, then going into the go-live and then collect the money in three different phases, which meant that on certain quarters I had a very high revenue uh, and a high cash inflow, then it will drop and again it will go up in the subsequent quarters. To minimize this sort of a unpredictability, we move into a more stable model of ARR, which gives me a stable both revenue and the cash inflows. And we are also going for um, a products which are more or less ready to use. I think we have about 250 journeys which are easily compatible and ready to implement, which means that you take a product to the customer as it is, he will be able to use them what he needs. And again, any customization we need, we go into a ARR model of DevOps, which gives a consistent revenue for us, and customer is also able to use our products in a much faster speed. Exploring facilities for currency swaps and forward uh, booking effects in key markets. We are trying this. We have tied up with a couple of um, leading uh, institution, global institution. But again, we look at the cost benefit of it. Because whenever the currency, there is a lot of volatility, the cost of hedging also will be very high. So we use a matrix of ensuring that we optimize the benefit to the company and not incurring too huge costs also for that. Then expanding in developed markets with our competitive product portfolio. As we explained, we are exploring into the new avenues of um, markets. One is in the North America, another one is in the Europe side. Something more numbers, current ratio, typically a current ratio is the current assets versus the current liabilities. On a good testing, anywhere between two and a half to three is considered to be a good, but we have about 5.4 as a current um, ratio. That means for each liability I have of one euro, I have five euros of assets or cash or receivable that can service that liability. This also shows that I have enough room to collect and, uh, um, my receivables and I have enough assets to invest into the business. Then I also will uh, like to go for the account receivable aging. As you can see that we have bracketed that under different um, buckets, not due, 0 to 90 days, 90 to 270, 270 to 365 and above one year. In each of these buckets, I'm not saying that we have a huge reduction, but the direction is to bring down under each bucket a reduction in my ER. Overall, there was a reduction of 13%, but still our focus this year also has been on cash. The other, uh, I want to bring it to the attention of um, the shareholders on the debt equity ratio. Debt equity is um, the money what the company has borrowed against the capital of the company, which is a very key for any good company to monitor. If you look at it, all the, some of the large competitors, some of the large companies I have tried to project the ratios for last three years. As you could see, Technotree has the lowest debt equity ratio, which means that my borrowings are very less. All of you know that historically, after we came out of the debt restructuring, um, about few years back, even raising any credit was used to be a very tough option for Technotree. We are able to come out of that. In 21, we didn't have anything. But today, my debt to equity, my borrowed money versus the capital what we have is about 7%, which is lowest among all our competitors, which also gives a lot of room for me to expand into more. Things. And this is the other uh, data I wanted to present with um, the shareholders the DSO days, how many days of receivables I have to collect it. Here also I have given it in uh, um, different regions. As you can see in Africa, we, we are still um, at the same level of previous year and mainly this region is one of my large customers what we have been servicing for nearly 20 years. 
But if you see the main reduction in 2023 came in the Middle East region. Middle East was a new region for us in 22 and 23. Uh, we did a lot of work in uh, 22. We had a good amount of receivable there. We started delivering there and started collecting in 23. That is why you can see a substantial reduction in the DSO days in Middle East region. Overall, there was a reduction in my AR by about 13%, but even in different region, we are able to collect more. A similar data from uh, last three years on the operating um, um, EBIT. As you can see, again, EBIT, if you can see, it, it goes up and comes down, again goes up and comes down. This sort of a unpredictable movement of my earnings are always there because of, as I said, seasonality of the revenue model, what we had earlier, that is the license and the delivery model. If you see in the last two, three quarters, we are trying to be more consistent. It is always up. As we move more and more into the ARR model, we are able to achieve a stability in this. Our um, um, EBIT was about 30% in the last quarter, which is considered to be very good. While we look at the EBIT on one side, the other side, the next slide talks about the net income. Net, the difference between EBIT and the net income is after EBIT, I have this foreign exchange losses and the taxes and all those non-operational expenses that come in. So if you look at my operating results, I'm at 30%, but when I get into my net income, I lose out on that. That is basically because of the exchange losses, what we have. Even if you look at that, you can see that my net income is substantially lower than my EBIT because of these exchange things. While revenue, we grew by 9%, the company was able to hold on to the OPEX at a flat level. That is why my EBIT is pretty high. Company continues to closely monitor the OPEX to enable the consistent growth in EBIT, EBIT even in 24. We are also streamlining uh, cost across the global operations. And from a finance side, if I need to analyze what are my risk and my mitigation, the high risk is the high currency devaluation in Nigeria and Argentina, which we already spoke about, high inflationary trends in customer countries. We operate in many countries where a high inflation is a normal trend. And what is we are trying to do to mitigate it? We continue to have a contract negotiation with the customers wherever the currencies uh, for currency mitigation. High, expanding the customer base into more economically stable markets, for example, North America and Europe arrangement with the leading financial institutions for currency hedges and swaps. So these are some of the mitigation strategies what we have. As um, all of you are aware, we did announce a global cost reduction uh, program recently. Five to seven percent global OPEX reduction is expected by 2025 through optimizing the cost. The cost need not just come from the people, it comes from uh, people, infrastructure, other operational expenses, and also processes for increased efficiency and utilization, lean process model in engineering framework, working closer to the customer. This is the other thing we are doing, what we call as a near shore uh, deployment of people. And this near shore also gives me a natural hedge in the countries where these um, high currency risks are there. We are also getting into tools and uh, automation doing a better um, activity and ESG. We do have one completely a green setup um, um, with, with, with um, working with us. We want to implement this carbon or a zero carbon footprint across our offices, increasing the portion of customer specific product development to take place closer to the customers. So we believe these are some of the key levers for cost optimization. And uh, as our um, map indicates, we have development centers almost across um, in different geographies. We are trying to optimize in all the places. Now, I also wanted to give an update on uh, the compulsorily convertible uh, debentures, what the company had floated last year. This is a geographic geograph uh, a pictorial representation of the activities that happened. This scheme was launched on 22nd June 2023. 43.1 million of CCDs were subscribed. 
23.1 of uh, that was collected till date as per the agreed terms. A consortium of shareholders have agreed to subscribe to the remaining CCDs 20 million by Q2 of 24. Then my one more slide on, we do have one uh, agenda item for the reverse split. Um, if the question is um, why we are doing it, we believe that at some point of time, Technotree must also be viewed as a dividend paying company. We want to move into that bracket. Currently we have 318 million open shares. We are planning to reverse split it by one is to 20. That will facilitate for me to give some nominal dividend to begin with. If I had not, if I, if we do not do that, to service even a one cent dividend for 318 million shares is going to cost us 3 million euros. So with this reverse split, it will be possible for the company to offer a nominal dividend. Company will be better enabled to pay out the dividends. The planned timelines for that is the reverse shares subject to approval of the shareholders will happen on 19th April. Cancellation of the shares of equity into the new total number of shares in trade register as on 22nd April. And trading with the new shares and the new ISN numbers, 22nd April will be the expected date. All this subject to the approval of the shareholders. Now I'll go to the, what the prospects and the risks what we have highlighted. Constantly evolving market demanding disruptive technologies and differentiators and high competition. We are in that telecom world which moves very fast. Each year you find a new G coming into the picture. This is a constantly evolving market what we have. How are we planning to mitigate this? Constant investment in R&D to stay ahead of the curve and the competition. In fact, this was one of the purposes of issuing of the CCDs. We need to invest more and more in our R&D. Disruptive pricing and business model. As, as the markets open up, the competition becomes more and more tough. And the only way in certain geographies to win is the pricing what we do. Moving delivery capabilities closer to the markets and customers we serve. This is one of the cost optimization plan also we are doing rather than having few large development centers, move the development center closer to the market. We are also, the other risk is footprint in economically vulnerable countries and emerging markets. Technotry historically have been serving two large customers at some point of time who had 80% of our revenue coming from those two large customers. Today we have diversified and those two co contribute less than 50% of our revenue. Expanding into newer and developed markets, intermittent cash and carry um, policies, these two we are trying to mitigate that. Then we do have a receivable and currency exposure non-availability of euros in developing economies and central bank restrictions, long project gestation, in intensive repatriation efforts that are needed to repatriate. How are we trying to mitigate this? Constant evaluation of currency hedges and swaps. We have been trying to do with this, we tied up with a international uh, banking institution to see whether we can do a swap of the currencies in these developing markets. Improved productization and automation to reduce the payment cycle. As I explained earlier, our delivery of license, delivery, then go live, which used to be a very long gestation period with a two or three payment cycles. We want to minimize into moving more into an ARR model. Increase the ARR business model, expanding into newer and developed markets, and lastly, streamlining of the cost of operations. Prospects, we already saw that the BSS market is globally expected to move at 2% growth. That is what the market expectation is. But we want to be ahead of the market. Our revenue prospects, what the company has provided at the beginning of the year is between 2 to 7% and operating profit also we wish to grow by between 7 to 15% at the beginning of the year. These are the guidelines which we 
provided. The assumptions on which this is given is telecom BSS industry growth is poised at 2.1% annually from 22 to 27. Technotry continues to grow above the market rate led by demand for its competitive products and services. More ARR business models driving predictable and stable quarter on quarter revenues. Revenue impacted in shorter term due to uncertain global economic scenarios. Company expecting a higher cost of optimization in 24 and foreign exchange rates expected to remain approximately at the constant level. So this was my presentation, Padma. May I request you to? You want to come over here? So these are the financial statements of the company, which is included in the annual reports in detail. And that's the end of our presentations.